Hey guys, I've always taught and I've always believed if you're concerned with the truth, if you want to find out the truth, be concerned about what's right, not who's right. And um, if you do this, it's very easy to love and support people that you don't agree with 100%. And um, a lot of my friends uh, still can't understand how I could love and support Donald Trump and love and support Pope Francis. But I see they have a lot in common that I'm gonna share with you. And this, is, I'm not, this isn't trying to get you to support either one or to change your mind on either one. I just wanna give you a different perspective. That's what I do here, just give you a different perspective. There's plenty of scholars you can listen to, but if you just wanna hear a blue collar guy on the street, what he's thinking, this is the show for you. And you know, the way, um, you know, back in the day, <laughs> When I was younger, there used to be such a thing called a moderate Democrat. <laughs> they weren't all whacked out left wing uh, extremists like they are today. And one moderate Democrat said it best. Uh, his name was Mayor Ed Koch. He was the mayor of New York City. And he used to say, if you agree with me eight out of 12 times, vote for me. If you agree with me 12 out of 12 times, you're not thinking for yourself. <laughs> so um, I don't agree with everything either uh, President Trump does or says, and I don't agree with everything that um, Pope Francis doesn't say. But one thing we can all agree on, whether you're a never Trumper, a never Poper, a Catholic Christian or a Protestant Christian, the one thing we gotta agree on is we're pro-life. So if you are buying or selling real estate, please go to realestateforlife.org Org, and you will be assured that you will be given your commissions that you're going to pay anyway to a pro-life company. So uh, getting back to uh, the commonality I see with Pope Francis and Donald Trump. So first off, right off the bat, <laughs> uh, every president, you know, I've been following politics since I'm a young kid. I love politics. I love, I love politics. To me, it's a sport. And um, every president will always think about, have lawyers look at, have his staff construct and analyze every word they say. <laughs> Donald Trump comes on stage and says whatever the heck he wants to say. <laughs> he'll, he'll sit and talk for hours. And the same thing with Pope Francis. Every pope always had all their you know, canon lawyers, script everything they were going to say. Pope Francis just comes out and talks to us. He's just talking to me and you. He's not talking to all the scholars and the theologians. It's like Donald Trump ain't talking to all the eggheads in Washington, D.C. and all the uh, reporters. And then Donald Trump and Pope Francis will do the same thing. They'll say the most outrageous. <laughs> And I'll say the most outrageous things that makes everybody's heads explode and then walk off. <laughs> never give an apology. Neither one of them will ever apologize. <laughs> Neither one of them will ever give an explanation. And, um, you know, there's like, it's like this, you know, um, Trump will say things that everyday Americans will get. Pope will say things that everyday Catholics will get. But you have these conservative think tanks in the Republican Party that they're professional thinkers. That's all they do. They, they never do crap. Uh, they just get paid a lot of money to write articles and, and contemplate and, and talk back and forth. And they're like, Trump's not a Republican. So they're like, they come against them. And you have never Trumpers. These guys that claim they're Republicans, they don't even support our Republican president. <laughs> they're called never Trumpers. And, um, and and I'll give you an example. Before Trump was president, North Korea, they were they were shooting rockets every month. Like we were sure we we're going to have conflict with North Korea. Everybody knew we we're going to have Trump comes out. And he says, hey, rocket man, <laughs> he calls Kim Jong-un rocket man on Twitter. Hey, rocket man, you shoot another missile and we're going to make North Korea into a parking lot. <laughs> the, 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 the elites in Washington's heads exploded, both Republicans and Democrats. But the common guy laughed and said, yeah, that's how you fight a bully. You punch a bully in the face. You don't back down and try and freaking talk nice to a bully. And guess what? 
for four years, North Korea wasn't shooting uh, missiles. Guess what North Korea is doing now? The media's not making a big play about it, but they're shooting missiles again on a pretty regular basis. You know, Pope Francis, Pope Francis comes out and he says, this is ridiculous. We're charging five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 for an annulment? No, we shouldn't charge nothing, no fee. Boom, just like that, gets rid of the fee for annulment. <laughs> I, I know many Catholic people that aren't Catholic anymore, they're Baptists or, or non-denominational because they couldn't afford the money to get an annulment. They made a mistake when they were like 17 and got married or 18 and got married and now they're like 40, 50 years old and they want to get serious with the Lord. And people's heads exploded. Oh, he's being he's being easy on marriage. He's being easy on marriage. But if you're a real person in the real world, you know there's real people who made real mistakes when they were young and they're older now. And they're trying to get right with God. They're trying to get right with the church that they were baptized in. You know? So um, he speaks to real people, you know? But, you know, you have, just like you have all these never Trumpers, these high flutin guys with, you know, doctors, PhDs in political science saying everything Trump is doing is wrong. They're saying how a president should act. They're saying what a president should do. But he wasn't, he didn't care about that. He cared about the average American in the same way Pope Francis. He doesn't care, you know, if all these, all these, you know, PhDs are saying, you know, well, according to, according to licentious Nacia Comunicius, this is wrong. This is blasphemy. This is this is doctrinal heresy. <laughs> you know? Um, then another thing he has in common. And again, I'm not trying to get you to like Pope Francis or like Trump. I'm just telling you how what, the common things I see in these guys. So then, you know, Trump gets elected and nobody nobody can believe it. Like, how, how did this guy with no political experience beat the strongest political machine. The Clintons were like political animals. I mean, if you if you watch the Clintons as closely as I did, these guys are monsters in the political world. Anyone who's came against them committed suicide in the past. <laughs> I mean, these guys, to beat them was un unbelievable. And this was a guy with no political experience that was outspent literally 20 to 1. He made, hardly made it in commercials. I remember thinking, man, how are we going to win? He's, he's got no campaign commercials. But he was going to the people. He was having rallies unheard of, 50,000 people showing up at rallies. That's what started giving me hope towards the end. I'm like, okay, we're going to win this. Um, but the establishment couldn't accept it. The Democrats and the media said, nope, he colluded with Russia. He's not the duly elected. And for two years, not only did they say this nonsense that the, the election was rigged in 2016, they actually rigged false news, made a hoax, and had uh, the government investigate him for two years and spend millions and millions and millions of dollars. And then even when their own guys that hated Trump came out and said, we found no collusion between Trump and Russia, they're still pushing that that hoax, that Russian hoax. They're still, you watch NSNBC, CNN, any of the, they still believe it. It's like our Pope. It was a very weird situation. Pope Benedict said he's got to resign. He's too old. And you got never Pope saying, oh, no, he was pushed out. This was rigged. Look, he still wears a white cassock. That proves he's the Pope, <laughs> you know, and you still got conspiracy theorists saying that Pope Benedict is the Pope and Pope Francis is just an anti-Pope and the worst anti-Pope we've ever had. Even though Pope Benedict comes out and praises Pope Francis almost every other day, even though Pope France, Pope Benedict said, I resign because I'm too old. <laughs> nope, nope, can't be. It can't be. <laughs> so again, I'm not trying to support or go against anybody. I'm just showing you the common threads I see with Donald Trump and um, Pope Francis. Then you see uh, they both have the liberal media has a narrative for each of them. So... Trump's narrative, he's a racist. And, you know, Van Jones, a black Democrat strategist, and now, of course, he's an analyst on CNN, comes out and says, Donald Trump has done more for the black men in America than any president in 50 years. The media ignores that and just says, he's a racist. <laughs> um, Pope Francis comes out, signs a decree saying we can't bless same-sex unions 
because the church can't bless sin. The media ignores that and says, Pope Francis is our hope. We believe Pope Francis is going to allow same-sex unions. He's going to bless civil unions. Um, and they take, they, the media takes both of them out of context. I heard Donald Trump clearly say at these, uh, that demonstration that was going on in uh, Charleston, South Carolina, when Antifa came and attacked a bunch of people that were there, you know, that didn't want the uh, statue taken down of some Confederate dude. You clearly see Antifa come with bats. That's what the left does. Antifa, Black Lives Matter, they come with bats and they just attack people. It was clear. It was on the camera. But you did have some racist uh, people, some skinheads, um, that were shouting anti-Semitic uh, statements, you know, some Nazis. But you did have some people that believe that were historic. There were like professors and teachers that, you know, believe we should preserve history. You know, whether histories are bad or good, we preserve it. And, you know, you don't you don't make the same mistakes of history if you know history. That's the whole idea about saving these statues. And then you had some people on the left that were generally concerned. They weren't Antifa crazies or Black Lives Matter Marxists. They were like normal people that felt that, yeah, we should take these statues down. They're very offensive. They had goodwill on both sides, you know, they had goodwill. So I hear Trump say, hey, I know there are some bad people on both sides. And again, he's not supporting Nazis. His daughter is a Jew. His daughter, Ivanka, is a Jew. She converted to Judaism. His son-in-law that he loves, Jared, you could tell he loves that kid. He's a Jew. Never, No one's ever thought he was anti-Semitic until the media started putting this false narrative out there. So I hear him say, um, yeah, there was good people on both sides and there were bad people on both sides. And he explains what he means. So the media just takes the clip. There were good people on both sides. <laughs> and it was like, see, he supports the KKK. And then you hear Pope Francis. It's how the, the, their narrative for Pope Francis, he's a liberal. He's one of us. So Pope Francis is asked the question, uh, what do you think about the gay lobby? He says, well, when I meet a gay person, I have to decide, are they part of the lobby? Or, you know, are they trying to convince me to change church teaching? That's, you know, are they part of a lobby trying to change my mind? Or, or are they just a homosexual man or, you know, a gay person who accepts the Lord, key word, accepts the Lord and all his teachings, accepts the Lord and has goodwill. He wants to do the Lord's will. Who am I to judge? <laughs> so they run with, who am I to judge? And they, they, they like totally ripped out of contacts. Uh, you know, I've seen some, some news clips where it's, it's, uh, it said like, are gay people going to heaven? And Pope Francis says, who am I to judge? And I mean, just totally rip it out of context. You know, if they would have said, if a murderer, can a murderer, what do you think about if a murderer comes talks to you? Well, if the, it depends. If the murderer is lobbying for murder to be legal, that's one thing. I'm not, you know, he's wrong. But if the murderer accepts the Lord and has goodwill, who am I to judge? <laughs> so you see how the media twists this guy's words just like they twist Trump's words all the time? I have a friend. His, uh, he, he speaks Spanish and Italian, actually. And he tells me, uh, he says when he listens to him in, you know, Italian or Spanish, he hears one thing. But when he listens to the media, he hears it translated into liberalism. <laughs> it's not even in translated into English. It's translated into liberalism. So the media has a narrative for both guys. Uh, what else do they have in common? They don't apologize, <laughs> you know? They call Trump a racist because of something he says. He doesn't apologize. He doesn't clarify. He don't answer him because he knows he's not a racist. Don't be ridiculous. Don't be ridiculous. It's the most ridiculous thing you want to say. Why would you answer such a ridiculous claim? Right before he was elected, Jesse Jackson and hundreds of black civic leaders gave him an award for helping out the black community. Um, so it's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. So he's not going to answer it. The media will claim Pope Francis isn't Catholic. Pope Francis don't believe in hell. Pope Francis is pro-abortion, pro-homosexuality. 
Pope Francis is like, I'm a son of a church. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I'm the Pope of the Catholic Church. That is such a ridiculous statement. I'm not even going to entertain it. So he doesn't answer it. And people's heads explode. <laughs> and on both sides, you have people making a lot of money criticizing the Pope. And a lot of people making a lot of money criticizing Trump. But the average person is hearing their language being spoken to them by both. And, you know, Pope... Pope Francis may not say all the theological things correctly. Donald Trump may not say everything politically correct. But he's speaking to the average person. He's speaking. He's not speaking to the eggheads. He's, you know, they're not speaking to the theologians. They're speaking to the common man and woman. You know, I had a few more. <laughs> um, I, there were so many. I don't even remember. Um. Oh my goodness, um, there's so many, there's so many other commonalities, but you know, I'm not trying to change your mind on either one. I'm just saying, think for yourself and, you know, listen, listen to everything that's being said, because one word can change a sentence. One sentence can change a whole paragraph, a whole statement. You know, there's a lot of hate for both of these men. Uh, there's a lot of people that their hatred for both of these men blind them, you know? Um, so, you know, just take everything in context. And, uh, you know, we were talking about marriage and everyone's like, well, it, he ain't got the right. I don't care if he talks like a common man. He can't change the doctrine on marriage. And again, you know, uh, there's always been annulments. He didn't change that. And they say, and they'll say some, some document that the common man never even heard of that he signed off on, or he endorsed, um, saying that married, uh, divorced and remarried people could take communion. I didn't see the document. I don't know exactly what it said, so I'm not going to comment on that, but you know, when the Pharisees brought the adulterous woman, to Jesus. They thought they had him. They thought they had him. And they were about to stone him. They're like, you say you're not against the law. You follow the law. The law tells us this adulterous woman should be stoned to death. We got you, Jesus. Either you're going to follow the law and let us stone her, or you're going to break the law. Which is it? We know you're all full of mercy and love. Everybody comes to you because you're so nice and you're so merciful and you're so loving. Let's see what you say about this, Jesus. We're going to stone her, right? And Jesus said, all right. Whoever's without sin, throw the first stone. <laughs> and no one stoned her because the heart of the law is mercy. The heart of the law is mercy. And Jesus chose not to stone her. So that is the heart I see with Pope Francis. I'm not saying he's right or wrong. I'm not a theologian. I'm not a scholar. This is blue collar Catholic. This is not blue collar scholar. <laughs> if you want to see a scholar, watch my shows that say blue collar and a scholar and listen to the other guy, not me. <laughs> and I've had some great ones. I've had the former president of the Evangelical Theological Society considered the greatest biblical the uh, scholar in Protestantism, who became Catholic, Francis, Dr. Francis Beckwith on. He was my last one. I had Dr. Scott Hahn. I've had Dr. Robert P. George, Dr. Alan Keyes. So I'm just telling you from a blue collar guy who reads the Bible and sees Jesus's heart, his motivation is mercy. <laughs> and that's what I see with Pope Francis. It was mercy when he said, there's people that come to me and they're devout. They love the Lord and they can't have the Eucharist. And it's my understanding that he told the bishops, he didn't have some official decree like a king. He told the bishop, find a way within, within the bounds of canon law to allow these people to take the Eucharist. And I, I don't know what the legality of it is and how they found it, but the Pharisees didn't think Jesus could find a way to break the law because he didn't break the law. He brought us to the heart of the law, mercy. So, you know, I'm just saying this is how some people can see it. I'm not trying to change your mind on Pope Francis. Um, 
Another thing, okay, here's another thing that they have in common. Whenever I talk about Donald Trump or Pope Francis, I lose a bunch of subscribers. <laughs> and Donald Trump actually cost me a lot of money, but I don't care. Because, um, you know, when I started this channel, it was just, I knew, I read a lot of books by theologians and scholars that became um, Catholic, but I didn't hear anything from like a common guy like me, blue collar guy. So I said, well, let me just make a channel and tell people why blue collar people. There's a lot of blue collar Catholics now that were once Protestant. Let me explain why we're doing it too. So that's why I started this channel. So that's all I talked about. But then, like many of you guys, I seen the danger of Joe Biden winning. I seen the danger. I mean, if I would have said, thus saith the Lord, people would be calling me a prophet today because I seen that our country was going to be in chaos. I seen what he was saying about... Uh, the environment and oil and gas. I knew gas prices were going to rise. I, I knew from watching him for 50 years that he's been wrong on every foreign policy. I knew the foreign or foreign policy was going to be a mess. The whole world was going to be on fire. This was predictable. This is why I had Michael Voris on because, you know, I was giving you from a blue collar guy who's watched, uh, you know, like an observer in the, in, in, you know, in the stands watching politics since I'm a little kid. I knew this was going to happen. Michael Voris was an insider, four-time Emmy award-winning news anchor. So he knew it. He knew things that I didn't know. Like he broke down, we, like we all knew these polls were bull crap, but he broke down how they manipulate the polls. It was great. And the two of us did everything we could to get Trump reelected. And that got a lot of people mad. I lost a lot of subscribers. They told me, how could you support Trump? He's a terrible man, <laughs> you know? And then on top of that, when I seen how he lost, I made several videos explaining how he lost and YouTube demonetized me for quite a few months. <laughs> that means that I wasn't getting paid for anything I did on YouTube, but I didn't care because the truth is the truth. You know, we don't do this. I don't think many of us do this for the money. Most of us have full-time jobs that do this. But um, same thing with Pope Francis. If I come out and support, it's kind of funny. Catholic YouTuber supports the Catholic Pope <laughs> and he gets Catholics pissed at him and they unsubscribe. But um, anyhow, I thought you might appreciate my perspective. And again, I'm not a scholar. I'm just blue collar. I could be wrong. Maybe a licentious, denacious, not a comanicious has something in there in some line that I didn't read yet because I don't know how to read Latin. <laughs> but uh God bless, stay Catholic, and no matter what, if you're an anti-poper, if you're a if you're a, a never Trumper, a never Poper, stay Catholic. Because Jesus Christ promised us that the gates of hell will not prevail. We've had bad popes and we survived them. You know? We've had bad presidents and the country survived. The Catholic Church has been here since Jesus Christ himself established it. Two thousand years. And we're not going anywhere. In fact, we're growing. Don't listen to the naysayers. From 2010 to 2020, the church grew. From At 2010, the church was at, uh, I think, 1.2 billion members. And then 2020, the census was 1.3 billion members. Church is growing. The church is as strong as ever. Church isn't going to change their doctrines because it can't. No matter who. I could be totally wrong. Maybe... I could be totally wrong, and the next Pope, maybe Pope Sarah will be our next Pope, and who will declare that Pope Francis was an anti-Pope or Pope Francis was a heretic. Maybe he will. But you know what? The Catholic Church will still be here, and nothing will have changed. We'll be here when Jesus Christ returns, because that's his promise. The gates of hell will not prevail against my church. So, you know, we're free to disagree. I think it was St. Augustine who said, you know, in the essentials, there must be liberty, in the non-essentials, liberty, but in all things, charitable, uh, there must be charity. So let's show each other charity. Speaking of charity, I would recommend, I seen a great uh, dialogue. I wouldn't even call it a debate last night. I guess they did it live yesterday, Tim Gordon and, and uh, Patrick Coffin. These guys disagreed, but they did it in such a, a charitable way that I think is a great example for every Christian to see how you should dialogue or debate with someone you disagree with. They, it was beautiful, you know? They talk, they, these are two brilliant men. They talk about things I didn't know what they were talking about half the time. <laughs> but uh, but there were two brilliant men, two very charitable men who had a nice dialogue. And this is how Christians should hash things out. 
You know, we're not the world. We shouldn't be calling each other's names and, and you know, getting mad at each other. Say, I'm never going to talk to you. I'm never going to listen to you, you know. This is how we, we grow together, you know. Iron sharpens iron like, I'm sorry, men sharpen men like iron sharpens iron, you know. So, God bless. Stay Catholic and uh, go to realestateforlife.org.